What movie is so good you'd recommend it to all your friends, but so emotionally traumatic that you'll never watch it again? Alright here is a list I've gathered so far. Come and see Dancer in the Dark Mary and Maximum Threads The Hunt Boys Don't Cry Once Were Warriors We Need To Talk About Kevin Melancholia Life. Is Beautiful Leaving Las Vegas What's Eating Gilbert Grape The Pianist Wine Driver The Road Grave of Fireflies What Dreams May Come Dear. Zachary Stand By Me American History X Schindler's List The Mist Requiem For A Dream Manches To By The Sea When The Wind Blows Kids Hatchy. A Dog's Tail Train Sputting City Of God. Philadelphia Elephant Martyrs Brock a back mountain earthlings pay it forward. Moonlight Night Crawl a Mystic River SE7 An Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind Sorry to Bother You Where the Red Fern Grows Atonement. Children of Men The Deer Hunter Johnny Got His Gun. AI The Accused. The Game. The Last Unicorn Big Fish Click Beautiful Boy Donnie Doco. Bridge to Terabithia The Lobster Ray Silent Voice 5 Centimeters Per Seconds Your Lion April Clan and Breaking the Waves The Lighthouse Coco Precious. About Time Gone Girl A Married Story The Lovely Bones Million Dollar Baby A Clockwork Orange The Haunting of Hill House Interstellar Blue. Valentine Jacobs Ladder The Platform I Saw The Devil of Mr. Paprika 1917 Ordinary People Uncut Gems Spun. Lost in Translation Map of the Human Heart Wolf Children The Sweet Year After The Vanishing Legends of the Fall. Glen Gary Glen Ross. Lilia Forever The Butterfly Effect Jojo Rabbit Bone Tomahawk Enter The Void The Nightingale Blue Valentine Sophie's Choice Promising Young. Woman Pink Floyd's The Wall Sarah's Key Heaven Knows What Prisoners 7 Pounds Sometimes An April Cry Free Town 12 Years A Slave Serbian Flim. Hotel Rwanda and Tikrist When The Wind Blows Sallow End Of Watch Green Mile Buried It's And Is Hard Candy Aisley And Voice Octa Whiplash Love Kenny. Event Horizon Away From Her or The Chum Scribber Trassy Fragments World's Greatest Dad The Future Unthinkable Irreversible Love and Mercy. Last King of Scotland Blood Diamond Full Metal Jacket Memento Reign Over Me My Sister's Keeper. Elephant. The 2003 Gus Van Sant film. Not the Disney nature doc. It takes place in the fictional Watt High School. In the suburbs of Portland. Oregon. And chronicles the events surrounding a school shooting. Based in part on the 1999 Columbine High School Massacre, the film stars mostly new and non-professional actors, which gives it an even greater sense of realism. Hotel Rwanda Fits. Come and see. Wonderful movie, but even more devastating than Grave of the Fireflies, in my opinion. I'll give the same answer every time this comes up. Mary and Maximum. The Hunt 2012. A Danish film by Thomas Vinterberg starring Mads Mikkelsen. Threads made in 1984. It's a harrowing depiction of a major nuclear exchange between the United States and the Soviet Union. It is incredibly bleak and tragic the most effective representation of the horrors of nuclear war that I've ever seen. Everyone should watch it once. In my opinion. But no one needs to see it twice. Boys don't cry it made me depressed for days. Dancer in the Dark. Amazing performance by Bjork and brutally sad. I bought a copy of the DVD after seeing the movie because I loved it so much. I lent the disc to several friends and looked at it many times myself, but could just never summon the energy to watch it again. What's Eating Gilbert Grape? The Road. Watched it when it first came out. Loved it. Can't put myself through it again though. It's so hard going and heartbreaking. Life is beautiful. We need to talk about Kevin. That was a truly visceral experience. Melancholia. Really disturbing. Don't think I've ever really gotten over it. Errors Ahead 1978. Truly the most effective psychological horror film I have ever seen. Leaving Las Vegas Nicolas Cage is amazing in it won an Oscar for it. But as a recovered alcoholic, that film hits way too close to home. Good film though. Stand by me. The last line gets me thinking every time. I never had any friends later on like the ones I had when I was 12. Jesus, does anyone? I'm not sure I've ever replied to an ask Reddit thread, but I have a relevant answer to this one. Wind River. Somebody had recommended it in an R movies thread, and I really like Jeremy Renner. So my wife and I sat down to watch it. The tension in the film ratchets up nicely. You get a sense of the desperity on these folks on the tribe are experiencing. The hopelessness in their search for justice. 
I enjoyed the dynamic with Renner's character and the locals hairs from the place and still an outsider. Which is something we can all identify with in some way. The big shootout at the remote camp, why is he flanking me, was incredible in every aspect of filmmaking. My heart was actually pounding during that scene. A response I rarely get while watching a film. But my god. That rape scene just destroyed us. I know that's the point of it. To telegraph how sickening the act was. The senselessness of it all. I don't think I got an hour of sleep that night and had trouble getting that scene out of my mind for probably two weeks afterward. I think we both cried during and after the movie. I generally enjoy films concerning darker tones. Like horror. Thrillers. Mystery. But something about that scene broke me for more than a week. I guess you could call that great filmmaking. But I'll never watch that movie again and do my best to think of it as little as possible moving forward. Still think it was a great movie for a lot of reasons. But Jesus Christ. That scene. Once were warriors. The pianist. I can't bring myself to watch it again. The anger and hopelessness I felt for that man and those people is beyond compare. HBO's Chernobyl miniseries. As what is essentially a horror movie, it works incredibly well. Except that it all happened in real life, and radiation is ducking terrifying. Full Metal Jacket. I watched the very first bit of it when I was in officer training and thought it was a comedy. A few months later I sat down and watched the whole thing. It's not a comedy. What dreams may come. It's the most beautiful movie and I think everyone should watch it at least once. But I haven't been able to bring myself to watch it since Robin Williams died. I actually haven't watched anything has in since he died. Pan's Labyrinth I thought I was going in to see a cool fantasy flick. And it turned out to be a movie dealing with trauma, abuse, and coping mechanisms still a great film, but so gut-wrenching. Dear Zachary, hands down. However I've seen it four times. American History X. OD Boy, the Korean 2003 one. Bridge to Terabithia. Not movie but episode. Black Mirror Entire History of You. S1E3 I watched the entire History of You and enjoyed it. Next day at the office we were discussing our lease and cold and pinpoint the month we signed. Contract is locked up and the guy with the key is out. No big deal. I took picture of the new carpet we got installed, so I can figure it out from that. I had just gotten divorced, and scrolling through family photos to find that carpet. That ducking carpet, all but destroyed me. Had a different view of the episode after that, and can't watch it. Fun fact. It's been almost 10 years, since the first season of Black Mirror. Bla the boy in the striped pajamas. Schindler's List. Requiem for a Dream. Manchester by the Sea all day. The Mist. The ducking ending. Kids 1995. Who else is scrolling for good movie recommendations? Martyrs. The original. The Grave of the Fireflies. I'm never ever gonna watch that s it again. It's from Studio Ghibli. The same from Spirited Away s e enter Chihiro. An absolute masterpiece for sure. But don't expect to find happy little creatures in it. My girl. Hachi, a dog's tail like just knowing it happened, brings me so much pain. Wind River. Not a movie, but there is no way I can watch Bojack Horseman again. That's too much, man. Philadelphia. Sobbed like a little baby. Tom Hanks is so good and it's such a painful look into how truly horrific the ADS crisis was in the US. Beaches. Because she never knew that she was her hero. The Elephant Man 1980. Directed by David Lynch. I may actually watch it again at some point, but it definitely gets my vote for the single most heart-wrenching film ever. Prepare to cry. A lot. Green Mile. Elephant directed by Gus Van Sant. Spoilers below. The film is, in part, based around the idea of what would have happened if the Silumbean boys were able to carry out their plans to the fullest extent. Extremely well put together film and it shook me to my core. 10. 10. Will never watch again. Long time companion about the beginning of the ADS pandemic. 
from the absolute joy of the gay liberation movement to the tragic deaths of so many young people. The ending is heartbreaking. I can't even think about it without crying. Mysterious Skin. It's about child abuse and PTSD. This movie is incredibly, but I had to watch it in the span of 3, 4 days. No violence shown but everything is suggested edit. I was talking about the children. But many comments reminded me that there is violence. So be careful if you ever wanna watch it. When the wind blows. This is depression in film form. It centers on the blogs a retired couple living in the countryside during the height of the Cold War and in the aftermath of nuclear war. Throughout the movie you learn about them, and you get very emotionally attached to them well I did. By the time you get to the end of the film your heart will break. No I won't spoil the ending. Beyond just the film's plot it also works as a type of commentary on the old protect and survive pamphlets and films that were produced back then. The film itself is produced via a mixture of animation methods. Stop motion and cell shaded are the primary ones used, but there are a few others used in minor parts. The soundtrack is also headlined by the inimitable David Bowie singing the film's theme. That ending. Yeah just depression in film form to me. Moonlight. It was so realistic to my life that it made me uncomfortable. The Land Before Time. For a kid's movie it's so emotionally crushing right from the get go and then you have the tragic murder of the 10 year old voice actress for Ducky that just adds more sadness to that film. Jojo Rabbit. It made me cry, and that's very rare for me. Never let me go. Pay it forward, such a great movie, and taught me so many life lessons, but I seriously can't watch it to this day. Odd one, but Iron Giant, want to watch it again, and my wife has never seen it, but I don't think I can put myself through it again. Beasts of the Southern Wild. One of the best movies I have ever seen I'm old, but leaves you with a lot of phantoms. Also, the ice storm, and in the bedroom. Fuck please, no one watch in the bedroom, unless you are prepared.